Hello, my dear. Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. How are you today? I do so many readings. I don't remember if I've read for you before, so I'd just like to explain real quick kind of how this works. I see, hear, feel, sense, know. They talk to me, but they also show me pictures, and I call it spiritual charades. I try to describe the picture the best I can. There is always a reason for whatever they show or say. So if it doesn't make any sense now, just keep it in mind. You'll either remember it later, see it later, or somebody else will validate it for you later and go, ah, I know what she's talking about. So uh, this is not an exact science. Sometimes you got to, she's making my head itch already there. <laughs> Sorry. I always look like I have head lice or something because her energy makes my head itch when they get real close to me. And she's, woo, she's really close behind me. Anyway. Sometimes you got to stretch it outside the box a little bit. Um, it's not an exact science, so we communicate the best way we can. And it's her ball game. She can say anything she wants to within reason, and I can ask the questions. Doesn't mean she'll answer. But she's holding up one finger, so I don't know if that means she's only going to answer one question or there's one she's not going to answer. Anyway. Pushing on my back, pushing on my back, pushing. I can just, I feel like I need to go forward. Like, probably mad because, well, we had the holiday and uh, I don't work seven days a week yet, anyway, in the first place, but had some people that paid to get to the front of the line ahead of you. So I think she's pushing on me because it's like, come on, it's about time. I got things to say. You're the, you're the apple of my eye. You were always such a sweet child, at least around me. <laughs> She's all, grabbing her hair. She says, when you were little, little, it was like, I wanted to pull my hair out sometimes. But I couldn't help but smile at your silly little jumping on the couch. You look awful little, so I don't know. I usually ask them to not bring up things that you were so young you won't remember. You look pretty young, jumping on the cushions on the couch. And laughing and giggling. Uh, most kids have done that. And even and again, again, she grabs her hair and she says, even though I wanted to pull my hair out because you were so full of energy, I couldn't help but just stand there and smile and giggle because you were so cute. And I can always buy a new couch. Okay, now she's standing at the stove. She's got a saucepan and she's stirring and stirring. It's not a big pot. Usually if it's a big pot, you know, they'll show like a big pile of spaghetti or soup or something. It's a saucepan. She's stirring and stirring and stirring. I almost feel like it's oatmeal or cream of wheat or some kind of hot breakfast cereal. It may not be. I'm not 100% on that. She liked you to have warm things in your tummy. And then she's rubbing her tummy rubbing her tummy like this. I know you can't see, but she's rubbing her tummy. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy for the tummy, tummy. She shows you with a question mark above your head right now. Like there's She says there's two things. There's something and someone that you are questioning in your life right now. And it's just kind of like a little nagging, nagging thing type of question thing. And not like, not, not like you're overly worried about it, but like it's just kind of always in there nibbling, nibbling on you.
She says, don't worry about it. They'll both be fine. So if you can put that at ease, put that at rest, and not let it nibble on you, it's almost like it's not at the forefront of your head, like always right in your face. It's just something that's always kind of nagging at you. She says, if you can clear that out, if you can pull that out and just not worry about it, that you will feel much more at ease and much more peace. And if you want help with that, ask her. They cannot override your free will choice. I can't tell people that enough. I make all the dumb mistakes I want to. My guys go, Rhonda, really? We gave you better stuff. What are you doing? Because I can, I can say no. And they can't stop me, even though they should. <laughs> but you need to ask, and then you need to give her permission to help you. And then you need to allow what might come forward. And I always use like a job as an example. It may have nothing to do. Job may not have anything to do with you. Um, let's say you need help finding a new job. And you ask them, uh, bring me somebody who can help. And all of a sudden you get a phone call. Or you run into somebody in the grocery store that you maybe hadn't seen in forever. And they go, hey, I've got this great job opening at my, where I'm working. And, you know, would you like to come join me and I'll put a word in for you? It, it seriously works like that. But then you have to allow that opportunity. Don't be afraid to love again. Love is the best thing there is. Don't shield your heart so much. And love really is blind. Because it doesn't matter what color, what sex. She says, you probably never thought I'd say that. Whether they're big, whether they're little, whether they're ugly, whether they're cute. True love is blind. And she wants you to really take that in your heart and hold on to those thoughts. She's being very loving, very sweet when she says all that. Okay, I don't know if you know anything about crystals. I have tons of crystals. I kind of work with them. She said, get you some rose quartz, and it doesn't have to be this big. I have a little, well, not in front of me. Well, this is, this is the rose quartz I usually have sitting right in front of my computer. Get you some rose quartz. Learn how to uh, put it out under the full moon. Cleanse it. Let it reprogram. Let it, let it get all clean again. And, you know, it doesn't hurt. Like, if you're laying on the couch watching TV to put it over your heart area. Some people really feel crystals. I am just now beginning to feel crystals, even though I've had them forever. She thinks that, she's shaking her head like this, she thinks that would be an awesome idea for you. She's showing you've had an awful lot of people. Now, she says not an awful lot. She changed, she's changing it. Some people that have kind of stomped your heart into the ground. Oh, she says, you're kind of like me. I think I kicked that ass. I think I overcame that. I think I won, no matter what they've done to me, no matter how much they've stomped on my heart. And yet, just here within the last few years, I found out that all I'd done was squish it down tried to hide it. I didn't get rid of it. I had things coming up from when I was five years old, which is a very traumatic time in my life. Had to work through them, had to cleanse them, had to meet them head on. Hopefully they're gone. But she's saying you have something similar.
gotten, and I'm not sure where she wants to go with that. She's just bringing it to your awareness, I think, at this point. Okay, she says she, at night, she tickles your son's feet. He pulls up like she's showing kind of in a fetal type position to get away from the tickling. She's not pulling his legs. She's tickling the bottom of his feet. And it's, I don't know if he's actually, it looks like he's actually sound asleep when she does it. And then he pulls his legs to get away from like we normally would. But she says, no, I am not pulling on his legs. And maybe I should stop the tickling. Ask her. Um, if, if it's bothering your son, just literally tell her. Tell her out loud. Tell her in your head. You can talk telepathically. I've talked to a real life person telepathically. Um, ask her not to do it or ask her not to do it after nine o'clock or set boundaries. But uh, I don't know that I would ask her not to be in his room at night. You can, you can set that boundary. But I don't know that I would ask her not to be in the room at night because she would be a great one to bring nothing but love energy when he's nice and peaceful and asleep. And uh, kind of like a protector. I've been to somebody's house and, and she had oodles and gobs of people. And I said, well, you got four grandparents here and all these other people don't know why they're here. Um, if one of the grandparents was an asshole, we can ask them to leave too. But if there were decent people when they were here, you know, I would suggest keeping them and telling the others they have to go. Grandparents are good to have around. Okay. She does know that you were there before she passed. She's talking about the smell of some kind of lotion, like hand lotion type lotion. Somebody was somebody putting lotion on her, somebody putting lotion on themselves, the smell of some kind of nice smelling lotion. Could have been uh, somebody was putting lotion on her feet or her arms or dry, were dry or something. That, that type of lotion. She's trying to validate that she knew you were there. And e even if somebody's in a coma or non-responsive or whatever, they can still hear you. Just like that. They can still hear you now. I promise you a thousand percent she can hear you. She can see you. Talk to her all you want to. She loves you very much. Okay, so I asked them for unique signs because everybody knows about cardinals and butterflies and stuff. She's taking a piece that just looks like notebook paper and she's wadding it up and crumpling it. So imagine what that sounds like. And she's holding it pretty close to my ear. That's why, that's why I'm scratching my head. She's really close again. And, uh, I spent a few days changing, making a she shed office. Um, so now I don't, I don't have them standing back as far as far as I used to, but now they're coming behind me. Anyway, imagine what that would sound like. You could see somebody do this in a movie. You could walk through the store and see a crumpled up cash register receipt um, just in a ball. You could hear paper crumpling. You could be walking through this store and hear paper crumpling. You could be sitting in your house and see it done on TV or hear it or see somebody throwing paper wads or any way that that crumpled up piece of paper comes into play will be a sign from her. And you can be sitting there watching TV and you'll just hear it out of the blue. She's, this is my right side. Some of these cameras look backwards. So it doesn't have to be in this spot, but this is where she's at right now. So I try to explain 
because sometimes they try to show me exactly how they're going to do it. Again, she says, you were the apple of her eye. I love you very much. And I love you for the kind memories and thoughts that you still have. Please don't think I've forgotten about you. She says, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could sing you a lullaby again? So listen for, you might, you might even hear her humming. Or listen, okay, this could be the same thing. You could be walking through Walmart and hear it on the intercom, on a, their music they have going. Um, you could be watching a movie and one of her favorite lullabies that she used to sing to you <coughs> excuse me <coughs> sing to you might come up in the movie or just pop up on the radio or pop up on Facebook <coughs> or you could go to YouTube and be looking for something that might pop up they love electronics it's one of the easiest things for them I don't want I hate to use the word manipulate but it's easy for their energy. <coughs> Did she have a cough before she left? I do have a cough all the time. A smoker's cough. <coughs> and uh, I always warn people around me, no, I don't have the virus. I just have smoker's cough. <coughs> but all of a sudden, it's really bad. So I don't, I'm not sure if that's her doing it. <coughs> anyway. Okay. She's getting ready to leave, but she starts doing a, a shoot, you can't see my legs. Um, I don't know if you can hear me pat my legs. And then pat my legs, pat my legs, pat my legs. There's some kind of a, was there some kind of a game when we were little? Well, don't know how old you are. I'm older than dirt. Some kind of a game when we were little that did, it's not patty cake. It's, it's patty cake didn't involve patting your legs, I don't think. <laughs> don't remember. <laughs> anyway, again, watch for that. There's a commercial on TV where they're doing that, where that truck's driving itself down the road. My truck kind of almost drives itself. It'll do it a little bit. That, that new truck, that GMC, I think it is. Watch that commercial. Maybe there's something in the commercial. He's he's kind of doing something like that. But I don't think that's why she's doing it. I don't know that has anything to do with the commercial. But anyway, you might see it somewhere else. <clears throat> or maybe you played a game like that when you were younger. It seems like there was some childhood game that involved that. Mm, don't remember. Anyway, much love to you, my dear. Thank you for being patient. Um, like I said, people bumped in in front of you because they paid the extra and then the holiday. And then I had to spend a day or two moving all my stuff into my she shed room. <laughs> I've been bumped around so many times since my husband retired. Did it in the camper for a while, trying to get away from him. He's too noisy. I can't work. <laughs> Anyway, much love to you, Rhonda Constant, your favorite hometown medium, physical energy healer, oracle card advisor, paranormal investigator, voice for your loved ones. Later.